So thank you for joining me today. I greatly appreciate it. Um, so let's tell our viewers who you are and what do you do? Uh, hi, um, hi Oliver, thanks for having me. Uh, my name's Dave Crompton um, and I run a mental health blog website. Amazing, um, so why, why, why start that? Um, so I've suffered with my mental health myself. Uh, I've suffered with depression and anxiety. Um, and as part of my recovery, um, I went through about 11 months of counselling. Okay. And one of the things my counsellor told me to do, or suggested that I do, is to write stuff down. Write down how I'm feeling. Um, and I've since looked into this as well, and there are studies that have shown how much writing down how you're feeling helps. Um, it helps you process the thoughts. Um, it helps you get them out on the table. Um, so I tried this and I found it really useful. Um, so I was, I was writing about all sorts of things that I was going through at the time. Yeah. Um, I wasn't showing it to anyone. Um, my wife saw some of the things I was writing. Um, but it's quite a personal thing to me, really. Yeah. Uh, but I did get a lot, a lot out of it. And then another thing when I was going through my uh, recovery um was that one of my brothers used to send me videos of celebrities or you know other people um talking about what they were going through yeah and i found that really helpful as well uh, you know all of a sudden i wasn't just this person who was having all these strange and odd thoughts and thought processes um you know i didn't feel that like i was on my own anymore and, you know, it's uncanny sometimes. Some of the videos that I used to watch about um, people telling their stories, you know, I could, I could show them to my wife and it was almost word for word how I was feeling and the yeah. thoughts that I was thinking. Um, so that feeling of not being on my own really helped me. Um, <clears throat> so as I got a bit more confident with how I was feeling um, and after I sort of, I call it came out and was more public about my um, depression and my anxiety. Yeah. Um, I thought, well, you know, how, how could I sort of help other people? And I sort of remembered those two things. Firstly, that I was writing stuff down. So I had a lot of stuff there. Um, and secondly, that it really helps me to know that other people were going through these things. Um, and it just, Came to me one day that maybe I could do a blog website. You know, I had a lot of stuff already written down. Yeah. If I could share with people how I was feeling and the things that I was going through, you know, if that could help one person to feel like they weren't on their own, um, that they weren't odd or strange or, you know, only them, they were having these thoughts. Um, yeah. I always said to my wife, it helps one person and it's worth it. Yeah. And that's where the blog website came from, really. Well, that's amazing, and I, I know from my experience that writing thing, writing things down does help a lot. And I used to um, write everything down, and I used to fill every single white bit of an A4, A4 piece of paper, both sides, and then burn it because yeah. then it was, is although it's the mental side of things of writing things down and the, the relief, it was also to see them thoughts that were negative thoughts. Yeah. You know, you know, writing things that I didn't like about myself and things that people thought of me and then burned it as if it, you know, so you could see the physical disappearance of it. Absolutely. Which, you know, it, it does help a lot. Yeah. And then, as you, as you said about the celebrities and stuff, seeing someone so high profile and so iconic go through what we feel like we're going through alone yeah. is, is so moving and inspirational, you know, to see that person recognize what they're going through and knowing that you aren't alone yeah absolutely and um, so uh, you have just touched on things that um that you did to get yourself through but how how did you know you was you were spiraling down into you know your rock bottom yeah um good question um it, it took a long time um, it took a while of me having certain thoughts and certain feelings. Um, and for me, 
because one of the main problems with me about recognizing it really was that I didn't have a, you know, a, a huge trauma, if you like. I didn't have a marriage breakup. I hadn't lost my job. You know, I hadn't had the loss of a child or, a, you know, a, a bereavement. Um, so I just kept convincing myself that how I was feeling and what I was going through and certainly some of the thought processes, these were just normal. You know, um, I got, nothing really, really bad happened to me. Therefore, you know, I can't be that bad and other people must be going through these things. Yeah. Um, and, you know, the, the suicidal thoughts were becoming quite, um, quite common for it to happen. And again, I'd convinced myself, oh, this was normal. This is the kind of thing that most people go through. Um, and I guess for me, the, 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 the main turning point for me, so I had um, a few suicidal episodes. Okay. Um, are we okay to talk about that on here? Yeah, as long as you're comfortable with that. Um, yeah. Okay, great. Um, I mean, I won't go into the episodes themselves in great detail, um, but the first one that I had, you know, it, it was a it was a long time coming. As I said, I was thinking about things um, down that route quite a bit. You know, I'd have I'd have times when I would get out of the car on my way to work, and I'd be walking into work, and I just started crying. You know, um, I didn't know why. I didn't know what it, what was happening because I wasn't really one for crying, to be honest. Um, that was possibly one of my issues as well. That I was just a typical bloke. You know, yeah. Um, we just get on with it. Uh, don't tell anyone about how you're feeling, um, which is I know now is just the complete opposite of how you should be. Um, but anyway, back to when I first sort of realised was my first suicidal episode. Um, you know, it, it 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 was heavy. It got you know it was touch and go. Yeah. Um, but the thing that pulled me back from it was um, the thoughts of my wife and my kids. And that really did pull me back. But if anyone's ever ever been that close, you know, um, it's, it's a horrible, horrible thing to go through. Um, and I came home from work that day and walked to see my wife. And she walked in and you know, I just grabbed her, hugged her, broke down in tears. Um, but I didn't tell her why. I still wasn't ready to admit that I had a problem. Yeah. Um, so at that point, she knew there was something wrong. And having spoken to her since now, she she sort of known there wasn't something right with me for a while. Um, but that was the sort of you know me convincing myself that these thoughts were normal, and yeah. you know, everyone has these thoughts. You know that that experience was not normal. Yeah. So do you feel like um, you, you, you know, you're living a much better life now because you're more open about things? Oh, 100%. Hands down, there is absolutely no doubt in my mind whatsoever. Um, one of the hardest things I did was go to counselling. Yeah. Um, you know, it's one thing admitting you've got issues and you've got problems and you can go to the doctor um, and you can get tablets and I, you know I do recommend going to see your GP if you're having any kind of thoughts whatsoever that, you know, you're just not coping go and see your GP um, but that was hard enough for me just going to see the GP and opening up um, you know my wife came with me and you know, just trying to open up to the GP was hard enough but eventually through you know other all the bad and dark times after that, I, I agreed to go to counselling. And best thing I ever did. Um, mm. It was one of the hardest things I've ever done. And certainly for the first few months, it was really tough. And you know, I remember coming home from them sometimes and uh, my mum used to take me because my wife would be in work uh, and I, I couldn't drive at the time. Um, due to the medication, so my mum, bless her, she used to take me and pick me up. Um, and you know, I'd come out of counselling. I was drained. Uh, I was so tired. Um, and you know, it would take me a good couple of days to recover from it. Certainly in the early days. Yeah. Um, to the point where my wife and you know my mum would say, "Is this right? Should it be doing this to you?" You know, you, 
supposed to go there to get better. Um, but I found it so useful, even though it was draining, it was hard, and it was tough. Um, I just knew that I was doing the right thing because I was airing things and getting stuff off my chest. And it's the first time I felt I was able to speak to someone about how I was feeling uh, for a long, long time. So yeah, being open, being honest about how you feel, you know, it's 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 hard, but it is the best thing you'll do. Yeah. So how did you know you was coming out of your deepest time and you could climb them stairs? Um, yeah, that's a good one, really. Um, because it's not, there wasn't just a day where I just suddenly went, you know, ding, everything was all right. Yeah. Um, I remember from a lot, you know, I spoke earlier about the uh, videos and stuff of people giving their testimonies of what they've been through. And a lot of them always say that, you know, they, you know, one day they just woke up and they, they felt better. And, you know, and, and I don't think it, I don't think it worked like that for me. It was a, it was a very gradual process. Um, so I developed sort of social anxiety um, from, from sort of locking myself away in the house. Yeah. Um, you know, to a point where I'd struggle to open the door, you know, the front door if someone knocks on the door. Um, but it, so it was more of a gradual thing. I had amazing support from my wife. You know, she, she knew when to sort of press me and when not to. Um, so, I, you know, it was, it was going outside at first. Then it was, we'll go out in the car and we'll go somewhere. Um, you know, it was just gradual steps for me. Um, but you know, you just have you do have realizations along the way, or I certainly did. You know, one day I was sat there, and I remember turning to my wife and just saying, you know, I think I think I feel happy. Yeah. You know, and that was something that I'd not felt for a long, long time. Um, you know, it was very strange, and and as well with the the suicide stuff. Um. You know, suicide for me was like a safety blanket, if you will. Yeah. In a strange way, it was like, you know, it doesn't matter what I go through. And I know this isn't right now, but this is just, it just shows the sort of thought processes you go through. Um, was that it was almost like I always had that there. If things got so bad, you know, that was my way out. Um, and then I got to a point where, that was no longer there for me. And it, I actually took a bit of a dip when I had this realization because I, I could think to myself, you know, there's absolutely no way I'd go down that route now. Um, so therefore I must be feeling better. Um, but I didn't have that safety blanket anymore. And that scared me because I thought, right, well, what have I got now? You know, when times get really bad, what have I got now? Um, so that was quite tough. But again, that was a, that was a big moment for me to just to, to for that not to be a logical thought process for me anymore. Um, that was a big switch around. Yeah. So if you could take yourself back to your darkest time, what, yeah. would you do anything differently? Um, to be honest with you, um, I wouldn't know that I would be able to. Yeah. Um, because, you know, the, your thought process, processes are, are you're not thinking, um, you know, a lot of, a lot of where I was at that time, I don't really remember much about it. Um, you know, when you're, when you're going through that, your memory is one of the, the things to go. Um, so it's quite a funny story actually with my counselor going back to sort of not remembering things. So I'd been with my counselor for about know, six months by this point. You know, this is someone who knows me probably better than anyone in, on the planet. Yeah. You know, I've opened up and bared everything to this person. Um, and I remember coming home one day and my wife was asking me about how it went and et cetera, et cetera. And then it got into the conversation that I didn't actually know her name. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it was really bizarre. And the next week when I went in, my wife says, you're going to have to ask what her name is. And she said, how can you not know her name? You've been seeing her every week now for the last six months. And I said, well, you know, when I got introduced to her at the start, um, you know, I, I can't really remember much about it. I was 
A, in a really bad place. Um, B, I was scared and nervous about going to counselling, but it was all a bit of a blur for me, yeah. really. Um, you probably see while you're going through it in the actual counselling sessions themselves, certainly at the start for me, it's hard. You know, the, the time just whizzes by. Um, so, you know, I got introduced to her at the start, and I don't really remember the start. And after that, every time I met her, you know, hi, Dave, and I'd say, oh, hi, uh. Um, and I'd be nervous about going in, and I just never, never got a name came up again. So I did, I did mention it to her, um, and she, she had a good laugh, laughing about it. But yeah, <laughs> um, I think I've gone off at a tangent there with you, have I? What was your question? Uh, it was, uh, to be honest, it was um, how can you see yourself coming out? But yeah, I think you've, you have answered it. Yeah, yeah, I um, yeah. And what would I do differently? I really couldn't tell you, to be honest, and that's probably not the answer you were after, but you know, those days are such a haze and such a, uh, you know, people talk about it being dark and grey, you know, that absolutely is the truth. It is grey and it is dark. And, um, you know, when you do get through the other side of it, and I would say that to anyone that's listening here, that's going through that at this moment, you know, there is light at the end of the tunnel. Um, I remember seeing something where someone told, um, someone mentioned that you will see colour again. And I thought, oh, that's so strange, you know, I can see colour. Um, but it's not until you come out the other side that you actually notice and the, you know, yeah. the world becomes vibrant again. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so now knowing a lot more about mental health, obviously after opening up about your feelings, is, is there anything you would tell yourself back in that time? Um, to tell myself, um, it would probably be around being open, you know, and not being, um, you can't tell yourself not to be so um, scared and fearful, but I guess that's the thing, it's the fear. For me, it was the fear of um, people finding out fear of people thinking that um, you know, thinking that I've not got it all together and I'm yeah. you know I'm, I'm odd and I'm weird and I'm crazy um, you know whereas whereas now I would say it's the complete opposite everything that I thought I was and that was the reason not to say anything uh, it's completely the opposite you know for someone to admit that they can't cope and for someone to say that they're struggling takes real courage. It's not a weakness to say that you're not coping. Um, you know, and I used to think that, oh, that person over there is really strong because they've got it together. Yeah. You know, you don't know what that person's going through. You're just looking at the positives that you see about that person. You don't know anything else that's going on with them. So that's the wrong thing to think about anyway in the first place. But also, if you know, if someone isn't or has never had mental health issues you know i'd say well look to them you know they've to me what that shows is that they've they've never been pushed to the point um you know pushed to that breaking point yeah um, everyone's got a breaking point it doesn't make you weak it just means you're being pushed to yours yeah um so what would you tell to people that are that suffering you know people that are watching this that are behind those closed doors and they don't know what to do and um, as it's, it's clear through my message throughout this i think so far is tell somebody um you know talk to your gp go and see your gp you know if you if you don't want to do that go and talk to someone you trust um, you know, if you don't have someone you trust there are phone lines free free phone phone lines that you can just google and you can get yeah um but you know by talking to someone you feel an immediate relief you know i talk to people every day now about how i'm feeling um and it's it's an immediate weight off the shoulders um but that's got to be a positive for you but secondly you know people are out there that want to help you one of my things was around, you know, as I said, being fearful and not wanting to be judged. There are tons of non-judgmental people out there wanting to help you. Yeah. Um, they won't think anything 
bad of you. They won't think you're being a, you know, moaning or you're being a drain on their resources or anything like that. There's people, genuinely good people out there that want to help you. You've just got to reach out. And it's one of the hardest things you'll do. You know, don't underestimate it, but it's also one of the best things you'll do. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, thank you so much for sharing your story and your experience with mental health. Um, I will certainly give all our viewers your blog details and how they can contact you for things. Um, so I greatly appreciate you coming on today. Um, and hopefully we can meet for a coffee when lockdown's over. Absolutely, that'd be great, Oliver. So, <laughs> see you soon. All right, see you, mate. Bye.